So I'm generally like a pretty positive, happy person, and I like to spread positivity all around. It's like who I am. My first ever job was a restaurant hostess at a restaurant called Montana's. Um, I was essentially paid to smile to people, which I loved, you know, positivity all around. Um, most of it was like, just don't be an asshole. But uh, there were a few specific points that I do remember, um, especially at a job where we tried to help people in some way. You know, empathy is key. So for example, hostesses would look at couples walking in and say, table for two, which is, you know, cute and nice. Um, but when one person comes in, you have to ask, how many people? You don't ask, table for one, or worse, just one. <laughs> you might think it's a no-brainer, but I've seen it before. Uh, now, I'm a datascope, uh, now I'm a data scientist at Datascope Analytics. We are a data science consulting firm. Now, when I tell this to people, the most common question that I get is, how did you get your job? Data science, ooh. Um, now, as a quick aside, the field data science is nothing new. Uh, people have been using quant methods, models, coding for decades, and scientific research has been using data-driven techniques for centuries. Because what's data beyond evidence? You know, uh, in science, the data show, the phrase the data show, and the phrase the evidence shows are one and the same, really. Uh, I think the use of data to solve problems is becoming more popular in industry uh, because people are actually starting to recognize its inherent value. Uh, therefore, more companies are making more of an effort to collect and store data in some smart way and finding insights from the data that they collected even before they knew how it would be useful. Um, so there's that. But I personally got into data science because as a positive person, I wanted to help people. Um, I was like, oh cool, all these nerd skills I learned in school and I can do good for others using technology to drive systematic social change. Oh great. Um, so coming out of school, I wasn't sure uh, what exactly I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to keep that aspect of helping people, whatever that might mean. So when anyone starts working at Datascope, you brainstorm with these guys. Uh, in the first three months, you're not on client projects. You're on like a pet project. Uh, you develop something that you're really passionate about and um, as a means to learn the tools and techniques that you need. So with this toy project, here was my chance to do something good for other people. I started to develop a web app that would have a routing, uh, a routing engine for casual bikers like me who like never bike without a helmet and who like only go on like slow cruisers, you know. Uh, the primary goal was to learn specific technical skills and tools. The secondary goal was to create something that would be useful to others. Um, I never finished this project. In fact, the Inkscape SVGs that you see here probably comprise the best deliverables I ever made. And <laughs> using these in this presentation is probably the most useful they've ever been. Uh, but <laughs> the primary goal was achieved. I mean, I learned the technical skills that you need for, to be a data scientist. Um, but the more focused on the coding that I got, the more I forgot to be empathetic to other people and for bikers that are like me. The next project I jumped in on was this fun little thing called Lunch. It had a use case, a motivation. It was a food truck tracker two years ago. We started this project partly to avoid like the franchise fair in the loop. Um, it extracts tweets and geolocates them um, and displays them nicely on a map. When I came on, I added High Park. At the time, we were also working closely with the Red Cross in a pro bono engagement, trying to improve their dispatch. Um, and offhandedly, we showed them this app, and they were like, oh, cool, something shiny and like data science-y. Let's use this. Uh, so they loved the idea and just wanted to apply it. So very quickly, we built them essentially a replica of lunch. Um, it was a Red Cross truck tracker in which drivers tweet their locations, and it would be mapped and helping them coordinate you know, across the city. Uh, before this, there was no appreciable <laughs> mapping element in the Red Cross. Um, but as you can see, and these screenshots were taken uh, this week, the app hasn't been used in 11 months. They wanted it, we built it, it didn't stick. That's okay, uh, not everything is gonna stick. I mean, we built it in like an afternoon or so, we didn't ask them, we didn't do um, anything other than just hack together something, but there's still an important lesson to learn here. First, it didn't integrate well into their current system. I'm not really sure that most people even use Twitter in the Red Cross. Our app was like a shiny new thing that most people thought was like a neat little shiny app, uh, but eventually they lost interest. Um, they didn't get enough out of viewing things on a map um, separate from their other you know, management tools. 
Uh, most importantly, we didn't empathetically design for our end user. For full project engagements, we continue to iterate and incorporate feedback from whoever's going to use the damn thing in the end. Uh, this process is what really drives our work and gets people to, to use things and, and gets them to be useful and solve the right problems. One of our more successful projects we did uh, did use this design process, um, the Chicago Energy Map. In Aaron's talk last year, he presented it in greater detail, but basically it's a partnership with uh, uh, a bunch of companies and organizations, including the City, the Civic uh, Consulting Alliance, and IDEO, and some energy companies. Um, it's an exploratory data visualization that lets you see how much energy the people of Chicago are using, both for electricity and gas usage. You can look to see how your neighborhood compares with other neighborhoods, and you can see it as detailed at, as the census block level, which is generally only up to a few dozen houses or buildings. Um, this is the front facing portion of a larger initiative to help people improve their energy efficiency in the city. Here, we were empathetic to our end users. We listened to what they wanted. In our testing, we learned that people wanted to know how their neighborhood was doing, but that they didn't really know where it was on a map. So um, we added like the search bar and the ability to zoom and just explore. We also listened to the tech nerd end users who were like, this is cool, how'd you build it? So it's available on GitHub. We also never for, uh, forgot that perhaps its primary purpose was to be an attractive face of ROM's energy initiatives and makes people informed and excited. So now it's useful in all these facets, the public face for the city, exploratory visual for residents, and an open source front end code for people to play around with. The point I'm trying to make is that, especially in data science where specific technical skills are billed as really important, um, it doesn't matter how accurate your models are or how shiny your new app is, unless you're empathetic to the people that you're trying to help. Thank you.